play the game while you listen. What's going on here? But this ragtag crew of adventurers is covering the problems of the average player. Where should I begin? Discussing the homebrews, modules, and the latest content for all things D&D. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? It's Chef Bolg and the Pirate Captain's recipes for everything. What you're feeling is so normal and perfectly natural. With your host, the Pirate Captain. Everybody loves me and I don't know why. I'm an asshole. <laughs> I really am. The Pirate Captain is a dick. Chef Bolg. Let me take a couple steps back so I can, you know, really get this point across. It's bullshit! And Loke the Bard. Instead of making a deal with Cthulhu or, you know, the greater devil, you found an imp who was willing to give you dark vision in exchange for a gallon of blood. With a little mayhem, mischief, and a bit of bardic charisma, it's time for the show. That's right, we're back at it again, boys, for another fun-filled adventure of debauchery, drinking, mostly drinking, and throwing little bards off ships. It is Chef Bogue and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. I am the titular Pirate Captain. Along with me, as always, my bestest buddy, Bogue. That's me. And Loke the Bard. Too big a bard to throw off the ship. Uh, no, you're still able to be thrown off the ship. And, of course, Mr. Producer. Hey, how's it going, guys? We are Chef Bog and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. We are a D&D podcast. Uh, you might have noticed if you've been watching us for a little bit or listening to us, eh, it's changed up a little bit. We are working on ever-improving the show to make it easier for you. Before we get through that, let's go ahead and get through all this obligatory podcast stuff that everybody's got to do. Every, when you start a podcast, they give you a booklet, and it says, if you don't do these things, you're doomed to fail. Let's make sure that you follow us over on all our social media platforms. But first off, we'll get to those. You can find our podcast anywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcast. Um, it's on uh, Apple. I said Am- I said Apple Music. I'm on Amazon. Amazon's got us a bunch of different places you can find us. Just search up Chef Bolg and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. Let's go ahead and look over at our Facebook as well. You can find us. It's simple to find us everywhere you go. Chef Bolg and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. Do us a solid. Go there and like all that. And do us an even bigger solid. Help us. Uh, we are on the goal to reach 500 subscribers. We are at 39. A little bit short. Just a little bit short. But uh, I want to shout out to everybody who's actually watched our recent videos lately. Uh, our Wizards of the play t- <laughs> Wizards of the Coast playtesters may not be real, and that's kind of a fact. I don't think they're real. But they, you're going to want to go check out our last episode over on... It is on YouTube. It is on, uh, on your streaming platforms. Uh, side note, side note. Okay. Last, last thing before we get into this into today's episode uh you can always uh you can catch us on every other friday for the pop culture galley uh the pop culture galley will be um it, we won't be having one this upcoming week uh, i'm going to be traveling the guys are going to be traveling so we just decided to, to hold off on that but you're going to want to stay tuned because the week after we are going to be releasing some new content some special content kind of a teaser on our pop culture galley and then the Saturday after, we're going to be releasing the whole thing. So, that being said, but oh, hold on, we got we got some we got some breaking news coming in. Hold on. Oh, what's the breaking news? Uh well, uh, Baldur's Gate Free won uh, Game of the Year. Go ahead, game put, Watch. go ahead and put that down as uh, the pirate captain was right. I just want that to go on record. I was right, and uh, we're getting a little bit more breaking news. Hold on, everybody was right. You aren't right at all. You're never right. But hold on, I got more breaking news. This one might like you. Might like. All right, Bogue, what's our next breaking news? Bogue? Baldur's Gate is on Xbox. Get it now. There you go. Baldur's Gate finally come out on Xbox. So all you Xbox enjoyers, I'm so sorry your life sucks. But, uh, yes, you are you are now on Xbox to play Baldur's Gate. The greatest game of the year. It's going to be kind of cool. 
So let's go ahead and get into today's episode uh, with the recent playtest release. Did, did you uh, say that that Xbox users suck? I, I couldn't hear you over. I the am pretty sure thousands that's of games exactly I can play on Game, I said. Pla- Game Pass. I, I can't hear you. I'm I'm sorry. That's exactly what I said, and I stand by what I said. Uh, it is definitely definitely better. PlayStation's better, but. Uh, we got a lot to get into today. Uh, the big one I want to talk about right now, the first one is the updates to the Barbarian, the Monk, and then something we haven't done in a hot minute. We haven't talked about the uh, the issues, uh, player issues that we've come across, and we decided to throw some answers in and, we'll, uh, and how you should handle this. Uh, big changes that have come to the Barbarian. Uh, one of them, uh, some of them I really do like. I do not like the new... I really do not like the new um, subclass for it because it's almost like a dru. It's like a druid. Uh, it's a druid barbarian. We're really losing our class identity uh, in some of these features uh, with this. But I think I think the overall thing that the two new things that I really like uh, is ra- rage. Now you get one expended rage when you finish a short rest. Some of the some of the issues I've had with the classes in the past is that when you uh, there's not enough to keep co- like the game rolling. You have to stop everything for a long rest, which is eight hours, and that's just miserable to try and play around. Especially if you're a DM, you're trying to do maybe either one shots or even in a long campaign, it can kind of be aggravating to actually have to take a short rest all the time. Uh, I have it right here. If you guys are taking a look at it. Uh, rage now regains one expended rage when you finish a short rest. I'd like to see this for more classes. Uh, it would be really nice to have that feature where y- y- you don't get everything back, but you get something to kind of keep the game rolling. I and- I mean, I have a, I have a counterpoint. I, I guess two counterpoints. The first one is you just mentioned uh, class identity, and that, that feels very similar to the warlock mechanic of, of regaining a spell slot on a short rest. I mean... Um, that's, uh, but, but the that's warlock not... don't get to take advantage of that if party don't want to take a short rest. So the that's identity, true. so so the identity thing, uh, I, I I'm more talking about the features of the class that takes it away from that identity thing. Like if you have a barbarian that's casting spells, it doesn't really feel like a barbarian. It feels honestly more like an eldritch knight. Even eldritch knights, I have an issue with. So that's that's where I'm coming at. Um, but that I, I, I'll get to that point later on. This mechanic in the second half of the play test, they have been doing a lot of that. Where it's like in the first half of the play test, they were trying to get away from short rests, and now they've kind of tilted back towards it. You know, like the last couple books have had less and less mechanics on short rests. My, I guess my. The... Go for it, man. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I guess my second counterpoint is um. It doesn't. It, it takes away from the resource management of the of the class. If you can just short rest after a fight, why you, why would I conserve a rage in this fight if well, I know you should I'm still just, be you should still always be like kind of like playing like that, but you shouldn't be like handicapped into taking a long rest every time. Like you really need to have something that kind of. It kind of keeps the game flowing. If you have to stop for a long rest, and then it, that that's a whole process. It's almost like going into town. You have to figure out who's doing the watches and how is this going to happen. And and now you're spending more time worrying about a rest or how you're going to get that rest versus actually how do I accomplish what I'm out here to do. If your job is to go out into the wilderness and just take a rest, then absolutely that that works. But in, in most cases, you're trying to get somewhere, and if you well, get raided by a bunch of our uh a bandits and you didn't you and granted i'm with you on that you didn't use proper resource management that's it, it still slows it down but if you get something like a core feature not all of it they're not getting everything back they're only getting one rage on the short rest if you're getting like something small like that like a core feature to your class back on a short rest i'm telling you it'll probably be better for the game overall as it kind of increases it decreases your downtime and kind of keeps the action and the role playing a little bit more going. Maybe you even roll, unless you're a big role player at camp and you're sitting around and you're trying to figure out how you can murder a bard. Well, and there's ways the DM can get past this to still make the resource management important. Like 
sending waves of enemies instead of sending them all at once. Uh, you know, or, or, or you fight, you don't have time between the fights to take that short rest. Uh, but they use the resources in the first wave, they don't have them for the second wave. Yeah. Uh, that'll teach huh. them to conserve their energy for the next time so that uh, they're how not about, always going to get a short rest. I just, something just popped in my head, and I don't know if it's a good idea or, or a bad idea, but no, how about a bad this? idea, buddy. Uh, going the other direction, where rages are an unlimited resource, but it takes a full action to rage, and there's still the limits that even up to level 20, that if it, it, you only rage for a certain amount of time, what your resources are, are things like burst damage, where you use a, a blood die to um, deal extra damage, one, to ignore resistances, limited resources that give the barbarian more of a tactical feel instead of just being a tank. Have Have you read the new Brutal Strike? Yeah, we're gonna get to the brutal strike. The brutal strike. <laughs> I really That's basically like. what you're describing. Exactly. Right. But, but but making it more more of a baseline than having the subclasses do. No, no, no. This isn't a subclass. This is a main class feature. Well, that, yeah, I know. Cool. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like so, having that be the main class thing, and then subclasses have their own flavor. Yeah. Uh, a full action to rage would suck. Yeah. I mean, because you wouldn't it get to would, do anything. But you could do it as many times as you want. Yeah, yeah. but you you and. The new rage in this, it's pretty easy to keep your rage going now. Yeah. Uh, it, it is pretty much endless rage. I don't I don't have issues with the rage. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing it coming out of... Con- like, And I know I say this about the Sorcerer, but I'd like to see con- like your health be a resource on things. Like, if you're a, like a blood sorcerer or a blood mage, like, wouldn't that be really cool to like use your health as, you the, as the point? really because- like the Dark Souls... <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Like, I like the idea of like that... having to use your uh, sorcerers, especially, should be like that. But I, I wouldn't mind seeing barbarians well, have yeah, something we, like that. We pretty especially much agree. Sorcerers should have... be con. Yeah, yeah, and and barbarians have so much life to begin with. You know, they're the only class that's based on the D twelve. Plus, they're going to be a high con class, even though they're not based on con. You make a they... door, uh, stone dwarf barbarian with the tough feet. You'll have like a take a finch to that. <laughs> Don't hit on the dwarf, bud. You're a good orc. I appreciate what you do, but I do want to get into the brutal strike though. You did mention that formally brutal critical. It is a feature that lets you trade the advantage granted by your reckless attack for tactical options. This is awesome. I like this. This is this is changing gameplay for the better because it's it, it's making things that are just very like baseline something different. Uh, if you reckless attack, you can forego advantage on the next attack roll you make on your turn with a strength-based attack. If that attack hits, the target takes an extra 1d10 damage of the same type dealt by the weapon or an unarmed strike, and you can use one brutal strike effect of your choice, and you have the following options. At uh, These are your first two options. Forceful blow. The target is pushed 15 feet straight forward from you. You can then move up to half your speed straight towards the target without provoking opportunity attacks. Really awesome to kind of like help push people away from your party. Uh, hamstring blow, the target speed is reduced by 15 until the start of your next turn. So, and then it you get improvements. And I like the improvements. I'd like to see these as feats down the line uh, as different types of weapon attacks because uh, in the same playtest there are. But uh, at level 13, you get the target has disadvantage on the next saving throw and it makes it can't make the opportunity attacks until the start of your next turn. Uh, and your blow leaves an opening in the creature's defense for an ally until the start of the next turn. The next roll made by another creature against the target gains bonus equal to your rage damage. So you get you get to help out. Like it, it's turning the barbarian into a support tank, if that makes any sense. And I really love that idea. The fact that the barbarian is coming in and it gets to be this beefcake. It does it does a good decent amount of damage. Uh, and then it gets to like assist. Now the, they did. And these will play in with the new weapon masteries that allow them. Like so, the one of the weapon masteries is a knockback of like ten feet. Yeah. And then you do this on top of that. You just now you're pushing at twenty five feet. Yeah, but you gotta hope that you can actually. I mean, if you're a dwarf, you're not making that fifty. Uh, it's a, twenty feet is actually what the. <laughs> 
cor correct me if I'm wrong here, but to, to touch on the class identity statement again, isn't a beefy support what the paladin is supposed to be? I mean, you got me there. You got me there. <laughs> but I'd like, but the paladin, I have issues with the paladin. I don't want to get into the paladin right now because. But I, but you are right. You are right, and I will, I will concede that to you. It does. But this one kind of takes it out of being magical, like this one, or like faith based. It, it, paladins, okay, yeah. Paladins need to go back to being faith based. I absolutely believe that. Well, well so I want to get into this a little later. The um, the the branches of the the path of the world tree barbarian is kind of kind of wild, but we'll, gonna, we'll yeah. get back to that. Yeah, we're gonna get into that because it is. Pal it, it's crazy. paladins. Paladins are Kamina from um, Gurnlagen. Believe in the me that believes in you. No, no. Paladins that, need faith. Like that's the yeah. idea. You're 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 a champion for your god. That's like the whole idea of a paladin. No, that's a. It, well, Not that anymore. was the whole idea of the paladin. <laughs> now it's the oath. Uh, okay, my oath to my god. Like it's uh, the, the oath thing. Just kind of like I don't get where wizards is trying to remove like they were trying to secularize the paladin. They're they're taking so much away from it, and they're and they're losing the the identity that is D and D. Uh, I was talking to a guy that I play uh, Force of Will with over in uh, Ohio, and he's a Pathfinder DM. And I I want to actually talk to him. He's a very soft spoken guy. He's very fun, uh, very fun guy to hang out with. But I'd love to have him on one day, and talk more about you know the differences between Pathfinder and D and D because they're in their second edition now, and they have great classes and features and stuff like that but he was talking about how a lot of the classes in D, D have lost that identity like and the whole thing like you're losing your identity of who you are in the D, D world because wizards is taking so much away but features like this brutal strike that feels like a barbarian thing it feels like when you play a barbarian and you hit something hard it's something it feels it in its bone. Like you have hit something so hard that it, it shakes it to the core. Yeah, and, and there's a cost to it. You're using your reckless attack and giving up the advantage, which which gives you disadvantage. Or not, uh, and when it's just you have a regular attack. You you give, it, gives, it gives the enemies advantage on you. It doesn't give you disadvantage, sorry. Right. Uh, because you recklessly attack. So there is a cost that you have to think about when you're when you're making the decision to use one of these extra but that's but that's the good thing about good. The, that, that but that's the thing about the barbarian that makes it great is the fact that it actually it goes through and it does all of these things like you you have the health to do it uh you have the health to kind of like sustain yourself through these attacks and that's the idea so you can like you you can pay it's a high risk, high reward class. Don't get me wrong, but that, honestly, it's a low risk sometimes. I feel and high reward because it's hard to kill barbarians. It yeah, absolutely is. It there. can be done, but it's it, it's really hard. Well, oh. so I was I was talking with Loke and this this new hamstring. So you get the the fast movement at level five, and then the hamstring at level nine. If you're hamstringing, oh, in a one v one melee, you hamstring the guy, run back you know, 40 feet, the guy can only move 15, you run up, hit him, hamstring him, run back, you can just infinitely kite. You still would have to break away the opportunity attack, though. That's true. The hamstring does not uh, stop. Disconnected. The hamstring does not stop. Stop doing that. Uh, the hamstring uh, does not stop, but you could forceful blow and bound back, depending upon the enemy's movement, because if you... <laughs> Well, at level 10, you get the battering roots from the world tree, which gives you plus 10. We're not, hold on, you're, 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 you're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I don't like that. I, I like the idea, um, but I, the, the world tree should have been a, a druid thing. Uh, but, no, like, you could do it with forceful blow. Like, your your plan wouldn't uh, wouldn't be bad, so let's go. So, you your speed is increased by 10 feet while you aren't wearing heavy armor, which is all the time um and then if you the target is pushed 15 feet straight away from you you can then move up to half your speed straight towards the target without provoking opportunity attacks so if he's already 15 feet away from you and you can bound back and bound forward essentially and kind of keep them at uh a pretty good decent length distance so th there's ways of doing that yeah so you, 
So if he's 15 feet away from you, you run at him that extra 15 feet, you knock him back 25 feet using the weapon mastery and the uh, uh, brutal critical, and then you run back away from him the remainder of your 30 foot movement <laughs> and he can't come back and get you. He uses all his movement to come back towards you. And then you do it again. Yeah. It, it, it's just there, there. There's really solid stuff to this. Like this is, this is the right direction for a class. I, I, I don't, I, I kind of miss the, uh, the rage damage kind of lackluster. Cause it's only, it, it's not that much. Well, actually you're getting more rage damage with this than you did with before. Before well, you got an extra damage die from the weapon you were using, now you're getting a full D10. Yeah. No, it, it, and the, there's a good point to that. I just kind of like having the die. I guess that's maybe where yeah. I'm at. Uh, I do want to get into this, though, real quick, uh, because he, he keeps teasing it, and he's a very good teaser on it. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jeez. the path of the world tree. Um since it's played, the, the, the major updates to this, uh, Vitality of the Tree now provides temporary hit points to the Barbarian. Uh, we never really talked about this path when we were, um, when we talked about the Barbarian when it came out through its original. Uh, Branches of Tree now activates at the start of a creature's turn instead of the end. The range has an increase of 30 feet, and the Barbarian can choose to reduce the speed of a teleported creature to zero. Battering Roots now applies increased range uh, only during your turn and only for weapons with specific properties. And the feature clarifies you. Uh, you can potentially use two mastery properties in one attack, um, which is going to be deadly. Uh, travel along the tree has been redesigned to allow you to teleport yourself while your rage is active, as well as teleport yourself and your allies to greater distance once per rage. I got I'm a couple gonna, problems gonna... with this one. Okay, let, well then let's hear it. Let's see what your problems are. Well, first is the classes and subclasses that are in the PHB should be setting agnostic and now wizards is just dictating that every world has a version of the world tree yeah so it's no longer going to be this class is not setting ag agnostic so what if i don't want world trees to touch my world no i, I I'm, I'm i'm with you on that, that one i that, think that that and then we go back into the where we're stepping on the druids toes because um, if there was a world tree touching class, I, I, it may probably be more druid related. Um, and then, you know, the magic side of this where he's teleporting all over the place. And yeah, it's it's wizards like it, this one. I didn't even think about the world thing. Uh, and to me, that's a that's a probably a better point than I would have made. I, I, I just thought it was stepping on the druid's toes. But I think yeah, I think you're right with that. Like this is saying, hey, look, your world, because now are you going to be the DM that says you can't play this subclass? Even though they put it in the PHB, like you're you're gonna have to, and I and I feel bad yet again. It's Wizards making the play, uh, making the DM the bad guy for their dumb decisions. I think this would be a great, like if you put this in like a Xanthars or something like that, this would be great, absolutely great, because then it's kind of like, hey, this is an optional thing. But it, with their new player's handbook that's coming out, which would clarify this to be a new edition, just gonna go on and throw that one out there. The branches of the this whole path of the world tree would be like a, a a story plot or something like that in one of their campaigns. But to be the basic, it should be the berserker, the I wouldn't even say the primalist, the berserker, the totem, and oh, what's the other one? I'm blanking on it. Baldur's Gate three, game of the year, by the way. Um, uh, you got the totem, the berserker, uh, you... and the what was the other one? Somebody give me from the PHB. You guys. The PHB so only has the berserker and the uh, the totem. Is it? I thought I had three. Well, well the, the new in the the play test they have they've put they're putting four. Um, and I have to go back to play test seven to see what they were. I, I'm that's how forgettable they were that they weren't. Yeah, I, I guess you got to go through that. Like it's just the to they did a lot of changes to the totem. Um, so why the world tree? I, I don't get it. Yggdrasil, like, I don't even feel like that. That's like a big thing. That, that's more of like North mythology and kind of like when I think of the world tree, I think a lot of like, let's see, uh, let's see if I can get this in. There we go. 
That's why. Yeah, the Nordic. That's what, that's what I just said, so you weren't listening. Well, yeah, no, I mean, but that's why. Berserk. They're, they, the traditional barbarian that people come up with, like, in their head, often ties to Vikings. Vikings and Goths. That's the barbarian. But they, they were also Wizards of the Coast, where they're making the barbarians non-tribal because that offends Native Americans, and they're making... <laughs> uh, you, you can't make your spellcaster a witch because that offends pagans. <laughs> Give it up to Paizos uh, for that, too, because Paizos like, fuck it, we don't care. Yeah, uh, but they're not... You know, but you, they are gonna they are gonna culturally appropriate the Norse, but they they won't any of well, the other. You can't exactly piss off a Viking because they don't exist. Yeah. Uh, no, the there's actually a lot of Nords up in like Norway and stuff like that that still practice and do a lot of the Viking stuff. Yeah, but they don't raid villages. Yeah, I mean, we don't know that. Maybe they are. We just don't hear about it. I mean, look. I, I want to give wizards the benefit on this one. I really do, but I can't. Like, I can't do it anymore. I, I, I was talking to a, talking to some of the guys there where I play cards. That I was like, look, I don't want to hate the content. I really don't. But wizards is making it super easy to do. I like this barbarian. I like the barbarian, not the subclass. I like what they've done with the barbarian right now. Like, this is a fun. This sounds like it's going to be a fun barbarian to play. All right, you're gonna be a you can be kind of like beefy and be a, like a little bit of a tank, or you can be kind of like just a straight some like rage damage dealer. Like it's it's a fun idea. I like the idea that you can I, you can combine. You're gonna be able to combine like weapon mastery stuff with your brutal strike. Like there's so many options, and that's what I want. But then they're taking things away. We don't want to feel people. We don't want people to feel bad if their race is like not good at at, at this. No one, no one, no one felt bad. You felt bad. Actually, people on Twitter felt bad. That's that's who it was. I don't care Tumblr, what people on really. Twitter think. Yeah. I've, I've never cared what people on Twitter think. Yeah, I, I like they're getting away from the, okay, every single turn, I am going to be using my Great Weapon Master minus five, and, and I'm going to be using uh, my Reckless Attack, so I have advantage, and I'm going to just hit, yeah. and hit, and hit, and hit, and just it's, it's almost like the the, whole, the thing with the warlock where you say it, warlock. I'm going to use Eldritch Blast. Yeah. It's it's adding but, great, yeah. Because like you said, it's adding more things. It's it's making your class less like um less like you almost playing like uh, uh World of Warcraft. Great example. World of Warcraft. Great example. Uh, everybody who plays in the top tier of the game, they're going to be playing their class the same way. So. Uh, we'll use actually the warlock for example. I'm going to build up to three shards, and I'm going to use hand of Gul'dan. I'm going to build up to three shards. I'm going to use hand of Gul'dan. That is like a basic, like very like generic rotation for the demonology warlock. I'm, so so I'm then gonna, I'm going to make a uh, Chef Bulg and the Pirate Captain's drinking game. Anytime the Pirate Captain brings up WoW or warlocks, you take a drink. <laughs> oh God, we'd all be hammered. <laughs> But that's what that's what five E kind of feels like, and, and you're right with that, Luke. Like it's just like it's. What do I do? I do the same things every turn. But this one, this one's allowing for more styles of play. Like, hey, and how can I mashing the A button in the old school Final Fantasy? Because fight mm -hmm. is the first option. <laughs> there you go, man. And that's that's the truth about it. Like that's it, that's a really good example. I give you that one. That one's a really good example. You just you're just Not button mashing. You're walking. You're doing a walking <laughs> simulator. Uh, you're, you're, you're pretty much playing a walking simulator with this, but it, it's going in the right, pl it's going in the right path with the, with the basics of this class. But this whole thing of, we're going to go to Yggdrasil and we're going to do this, like, and none of this makes sense to do a barbarian, like, oh, you're going to get to transport through the tree and stuff. It's like, that doesn't, that doesn't seem like something my barbarian would do. Like even the primal is uh, barbarian, where with their limited abilities to like, I wouldn't say magic, but it felt like magic. Like it didn't feel like this one. This one really I, feels like it's trying to be a wizard or a to druid. me. It, to me, it it seems a little more inspired by um, actually God of War, the recent God of War games, because that's 
kind of what he does. Kratos is a barbarian running around in the different realms of Yggdrasil. So essentially they're just, I see, I see what you're saying. And now, now I'm even more kind of upset with it because then it's like, we didn't actually have an original concept for creating this. We just took a concept of somebody was like, Hey man, let's put God of war in our game. And somebody was like, that sounds great. And fucking Jeremy Crawford was like, that sounds great. Do it. And everybody's like, I guess we don't get fired today. High fives. <laughs> That's all it is. Like, everybody's just, like, trying to... I, I don't know. Jeremy Crawford seems like a very nice guy, but he also seems like a bit of a goober. I, 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 I want it to be good. I really do. I tell you, though, at least at as much crap as I gave it, and I still am going to give it crap because it's still a C- it's still C- minus content, I do want to move on and talk about The Monk. The Monk is on its way to better things on its way it's still not there uh we're seeing martial arts sees the return of monk weapons which is really good and the martial arts die applies to both unarmed strikes and monk weapons which is really good so you're no longer like yeah i don't know why they ever took that away in the last play test that was dumb yeah that that one jeremy crawford was thinking and that's probably what it was and sorry jeremy if you ever listen to this i'm sure you're a nice guy but i don't care uh, the bonus unarmed strike is no longer tied to the attack action, which is really cool. So you can kind of like just make that as like a bonus or like you can just hit it with a bonus action. So you no longer have to attack to do the bonus unarmed strike. So if you do, I pull the lever and the guy's right next to you. As at the same time I'm pulling the lever. I I'm, actually have a problem with this. Well, I feel it's, I want to hear your problem, but let me finish off what I got to say. I got to say, I like this because what it is, is it's saying... It's implying that you're actually dexterous enough to do like two things at once. But every character can do this with an with a light weapon in their offhand. This oh is not yeah. Not a monk special feat. The only thing special about this is the monk can do this unarmed. Yeah, but you would get that your is dumb. You would, you would get your with that every offhand though. You don't get any modifiers to it. This right. one you get your martial arts die with it. I would say because because it applies to both on arm strikes. So you, you but you still don't get your modifier. That your martial arts die is not your modifier. That's the in, you're getting your D six eight whatever it is for your punch. Hold on, on arm strike, but you're, you're, arm. it's still an offhand attack. Uh, but it's, which make... if they just made the rules for offhand attack, that anytime you attack with your primary weapon in your primary hand and you're you it doesn't say that. Your so, light hand. so it doesn't say that uh, with your unarmed strike, your bonus unarmed strike, it doesn't say that it doesn't add your modifier. So me as a DM is going to say bonus unarmed strike right here. You can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. That's it. Yeah. So I would say as your DM, if you're a monk making this, that yes, you get to add your dexterity modifier to the attack as well. Okay, that, that's a little better if that's the case. Because it doesn't say that you can't you right, can't but, add that in there. So my argument for it is right now is yes, you get to add your. That's what makes this different than that one. Because if you do the light melee, you have to have the feet that allows you to do that. Right. Whereas the monk gets to do it and gets both the martial arts die and the dexterity modifier. My point though, I think the rule should be the same for everybody. No, because you now you're make an off, well, everything. No, wait, where I'm saying where you can make the offhand attack, either armed or unarmed as long as you, it's not a heavy or not a as long as it's a light or empty handed you can make that attack and then you give the monks the bonus where they can they can add their modifier no because I, I think that would be clearer and easier than giving them a separate way to make what everybody else can already do with what because but they can't though. using monk weapons they would have to have that feat though they yeah because they have to have that feat so they have to spend the extra points so when they get to fourth level or if they're humans at their at the first level and if feats are allowed in your game you actually have to you have to spend those points to do that versus the monk just gets to do it that's what makes this different and this is what makes it you know yet again this keeps all the classes from being able to do the same thing that makes the monk separate and unique I think this is one of those things that it, it's giving a minor, it's giving a much lesser thing than it sounds like it's giving. 
it still point. it's still something. Like I said, I yeah. I still think it's a C minus class and it still needs Could, work. But it's I can, it, I can hit you with my long sword in my right hand and my knife in my left hand. But I can't hit you with my raw, long sword in my right hand and punch you with my left hand in the current way this, these rules are unless I'm a monk. The monk is the only one that can punch you. Okay, so we're getting into like what we talked about last episode um, with there not actually being like more brawler classes and how they took out the fighter. And I'm with yeah. you on that. But in this case, this is the monk. It's kind of their thing right. to, to be able to throw hands. Yeah, I'm every, with every... you that, that that needs to be more classes that kind of just fight. And I got and shout out to some of the guys that were in the comments and they draw. I checked out some of the builds that they were talking about. Really good builds, really good builds. Loved them. The thing is, this is the monk. This is their thing. Yeah. So trying to make other people like the monk goes back to the th the issue that I have with the barbarian, with the world tree. Is now you're making it too much like a druid and a mage versus making it feel like it, a barbarian. And That's here's where I'm the saying idea. the monk should be monk should even be better. You know, the monk maybe you give like the, you know, where uh, the flurry of blows applies to all your extra attacks. So if if you're if you're making two attacks with your right hand, you can now make two attacks with your left hand. <laughs> and look, I'm I'm fine with that. I gotta go off way. Like we haven't gotten to the points of where we'd improve because, like I said, still C minus class. Yeah. Like still C minus class, but this is they're they're trying to make steps in the right direction to make it a little bit better. Um, dexterous attacks. Like this was this is a dumb thing that they had to add in there, and I thought it was stupid. Uh, dexterous attacks now allows you to use your dexterity modifier in place of your strength modifier when setting uh, saving a DC uh, grapple or push. You should have always been able to do that, being able to worm your way out. I don't like the fact that weapon well, mastery was cut. And and that's one of those things where you could always use uh, acrobatics or athletics in the old version. Yeah. So if you used acrobatics, you were using your decks. So, yeah. So again, it's give it's giving the monk something they already had to make it sound like they're giving them more. Right. But like I said, I, I told you. C minus class, still C minus class. It needs work. There are some really good stuff in there. I don't like the fact that weapon mastery was cut. I think that monks should be able to be weapon masters and have Western, uh, weapon master feats uh, because they can use bow staffs and swords and everything. That's the idea behind them. And then uh, the monks' discipline, formerly martial discipline options, have been redesigned to have options that don't require spending discipline points, chi points. Nice feature, nice change, because it always seemed like everything you had to do, everything you wanted to do, always revolved around spending points, and you, it, the re the given return on your points was never there. Like you could get only so many points back, and it just always felt like you weren't getting enough. Um, and I, I like some of the stuff they've done with this, where you you can do it at at the base level for free, and then you can do it better by apl applying the points. Yeah. Um, that that whole concept of how to make those work because that way you know it's kind of like the cantrips for the wizard you can throw a fire bolt for free fire ball is going to cost you spell slots <laughs> yeah that, and that's the thing that i that i've always kind of like had issues with of like cantrips but that's yet again a conversation for another time yeah. uh deflect attacks i like this this is actually a feature i think is really good uh and i'm, I'm glad that it kind of like morphed into this deflect attacks it was formerly deflect missiles now also works against melee attacks and uh and the damage of the reaction now includes your dexterity modifier so you you're pretty much becoming like jackie chan more like the jackie chan style monks of where you're deflecting attack and striking versus uh i i'm just catching a missile hey, like you're telling you me if somebody comes arrows up and throwing it back you're well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If somebody comes up and the, like they're bare knuckle fighting you, you and you you can't like defend against that, or you can't dodge or something like that, it, it's really cool. Uh, I want to get down into that real quick because I, I want to make sure that that uses your reaction. Uh, yep, use your reaction to deflect melee and ranged attacks against you that deal bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage. When you do the total of damage you take from attack is reduced by one d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can spend one discipline point to redirect some of the attack's force. Kind of not okay with that. I'm already burning reaction. 
I should be able to just kind of like redirect that for free. Uh, ooh, let me actually screen share this. Well, it, it's the it's the difference between blocking and countering. You know, you block for free, you counter. I mean, you need to you need you're, to you're not a really more blocking it or doing anything for free. You're using your action, so you're only getting this once per round. Yeah. Um, if you do, uh, you can redirect some of the attacks force. If you do, choose a creature within five feet of of you if the attack was a melee attack or 60 feet of yourself if, it, if that isn't behind total cover if the attack was a ranged attack uh that creature must succeed on a dexterity saving throw take damage equal to two rolls nope so yeah here's where i don't here's where this is the kai point like this this should be where it's like for every kai point you spend you get to add um the martial arts die to it it should just be a, a single roll of your martial arts die for the reaction and then you can spend more kai points to kind of like give it a little bit more oomph on the attack, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be really cool. But to spend a point already having to burn my reaction, because I'm only going to be able to do this once for something attacking me for the whole turn until my turn yeah. comes up again. So I, I, I don't think the cost the cost is there. And that's my issue with that. Uh, otherwise, I, it's not a bad feat not a bad little feature like i said i would just take away take away the cost of it and add that you can add more damage to it if you want to spend those points so maybe it's like a last ditch effort to take down a boss and you're like I, I, we got to do this or somebody's gonna die uh let me burn all my kai points on the on redirecting this attack if i can redirect it send it back and then kill the thing you know Maybe it's kind of like that that scenario you're trying to like make it pay off. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't have a problem with them increasing that. Where if you you pay more Kai points to do more damage, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, I I like this feature kind of the way it is because uh, like if if somebody's throwing their fist at you, you can catch it, you know, like kung fu movie style, and and take no damage. Or, or they, you know, throw that punch at and you block it away, and he hits his neighbor. <laughs> if you used a little a kai point on, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't care for this one. Um, uh, the stunning strike once per turn when you hit a creature with a monk weapon, you can spend a discipline point to attempt stunning strike. I don't know why we stopped calling it kai point either. Like it's just this discipline. That, that, that's what I was talking about with the they they don't want to co culturally appropriate from Asian culture. With their kung fu monks. <laughs> I don't want to live on this planet anymore. I, mean, I need to get that as a sound. <clears throat> I've had to say that. I've had to say that on my radio show too. I just I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a there's also the traditional Christian monks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they so, didn't have Kai. So, yeah. No, they had God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no more deities in D&D. &D. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're getting to that point. We really are. On a failed save in, uh, the target is stunned a condition of until the start hits. of your next turn. Uh, on a I, successful save, the target takes force damage equal to your roll uh, on martial arts die. I'd hate to spend a discipline point. The, the reason I have an issue with this feature is like you spend a discipline point, and if they save, they don't get any damage. But I think that there was an error. No, no, no. That, 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 you're, that's backwards. If they save, they still take force damage. And this used to be a save or suck feature, where okay, they, so maybe you I would, they would wrong. be stunned if they fail. If they save, they take extra force damage. So you're always getting something for your discipline point. In this case, the old way was what you were saying, where you you, you try to stun them. If it failed, you just wasted that key point because you got nothing out of it. No. Yeah. Now at well, least you get some extra damage. Well, what I think is stupid, and this is just for the monk class in general, because the fighter gets four extra attacks, right? The monk should get more than that. Yes. But I think the monk should start with two attacks. Uh, well, well with, I mean, you do start with two attacks. With the when you're taking into the the account the the offhand. One we were just talking about before. You, you're now getting your your primary hand and your offhand attack from the beginning. Yeah. And then when you add in things like flurry of blows, that where you can do two offhand attacks. 
and there's actually uh there's a, a a nice little bonus to that too that they've actually added uh later down the line this one i would prob i would move height and discipline back a couple levels to like either eight uh i think 10 is kind of high but you can spend one discipline point to use flurry of blows and make three unarmed strikes uh this is with this this feat right here height and discipline uh they they're trying to increase the abilities that you have with your actually though I'm looking through the list here. Monks only get one extra attack. Yeah, yeah, that's what he—that's the argument he was making. And I, yeah, I, no, no, I thought they got a second one later on. Nope. Well, they get yeah. yeah they only get the one extra attack. So, at so five. they get one, two, one, two. At to, they get up to five at the highest level of flurry of blows, extra attack. Because they're getting right. two, they get attack plus extra attack, and then three flurry of blows. That's five total in this new version, and that's using a resource. Whereas and fighters using a resource, just get and that's four. less than fighters. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I think they need one one more extra attack somewhere along the line. I, I would even say two. Give them four, just like the fighters. It, that helps with the uh, damage mitig uh, damage mitigation hi in higher levels. Yeah, because they definitely have just a, dealing they, more. Yeah, because they definitely have that scaling issue. Um, yeah. yeah, and it put the last one at like 19 or 20, though, so that it doesn't... Right. Yeah. Like I said, not not, not in a bad spot. It's not in a bad spot. It's not in the spot that I wanted to be in. I think that it could definitely be a lot better. Uh, but those are like my like my first initial like looks. When I look through this, uh, the subclasses definitely need to look through more of their subclasses and stuff like that. Um, the warrior of the hand is pretty much way of the open hand. Like, I don't get why we, <laughs> what the fuck, who, who are we culturally appropriating if we say way of, like, <laughs> this is getting stupid. Yeah. This is getting stupid. I'm done with this. I don't want to live on this planet. <laughs> like some of the, some of this stuff isn't bad. I'm like, I, I, I'm liking the fact that the barbarians, the war, uh, and the monks are getting like their own like little add your uh your dexterity and wisdom increases by four to a maximum of 26 now i like that um can we i like superior defense D &D? that's kind of cool but <laughs> nobody's gonna play that i think my buddy who said it correctly uh the guy i was talking about that plays a uh, pathfinder and he goes that D, D doesn't actually create their content for high level stuff they only make it for like level no. 12 yeah that that's that's been an issue with some, even before 5, 5e that they they tweak their stuff somewhere between 8 and 12 is the is the sweet <coughs> spot for D, D um i mean e even boulder's gate only goes to level 12 yeah, yeah. Out now on xbox Oh no, next one. <laughs> da, 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 na, na. Yeah. All right. Hey. But yeah, because they don't have, and supposedly in the new monster manual, they're going to be putting more high level stuff. But that remains to be seen. Still, I um, yeah, I don't see, I don't, I don't see that actually changing anytime soon. Why, 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 why fix what's not, what's still broken? It's that's the Wizards you, of the Coast motto. One of the. Uh, earliest episodes of this podcast we discussed what could happen after level 20 and it's almost like wizards is like no 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 don't even worry about that you won't even get that high i i've, I know, I've known a few campaigns even like because we've had a couple campaigns that go to 20 and i've known a couple of outside of us that have gone that way well and it, as the person who dm those campaigns at level 20 i mean it gets really hard to challenge a party especially a large party of high level characters yeah, uh, I, I remember we did a, a, a level 21 shot with six or eight people one time where they basically fought the Tarrasque three of uh, three different dragon types. So like nine total dragons and a Tarrasque. And I had to put a, I put a time limit on it and it was the time limit that got them not they did not lose. They were like within one or two hits of killing everything. And they ran out of time. But I, I like wow. that. I like that. I like having those kind of like those kind of fights in D and D, where like it's more than just the boss that you're up against. Yeah. So it's more than just hack and slash. Yeah, but that 
because at level 20 you have you have to add caveat like uh, you, you've got to beat this fight in three rounds or the world blows i think you on. could add it even um, at level one yeah. i still think i'm you having add it at uh, level one emerald weapon ptsd right now yeah but yeah, oh yeah you can do it earlier but at level 20 you have to do it there is no there's nothing in unless you're using custom uh you, you could make your own monster who's immune to everything and uh, yeah of course you a dm can kill anybody anytime they want if yes. they try hard enough uh, you don't even have to try you're all dead <laughs> why because yeah. i said i'm god yeah. yeah but if you're using the stuff out of the book a level 20 can character is, is practically immortal i i and yeah, like I said that's that's on a bad dm and speaking of dms yeah. i want to get into our final topic uh I so said this one was sent to us by Bulk. He found it in one of the he found it in the Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition page. Uh, th this one, I'm going to tell you my, my my beliefs on this problem. Right, like this is a, a a bad DM, um, but it's also a bad player too. But it's mostly on the DM. And I, normally, I wouldn't blame the player for this case, uh, or the D like it's very hard where I stand. It's normally not the DM's fault, but in this case, it really is a bad DM. So here's the story. Uh, I have it right here up on the screen. It may be hard to read because it's, I know it's tiny. Let's see if I can't zoom in a little bit more. Oop, oop. And I lost it. All right, there we go. Uh, this comes from Sean Riley over on uh, the Dungeons & Dragons 5th page. Uh, it says, I don't think I'll ever play a spellcaster again. I just don't feel like it's an immersive experience. I can't count how many times I've said I cast this spell and my DM goes, what does that spell do? And I explain and he or she says, are you sure? So I flip through the book to read it out. It really makes me, uh, it takes me out of the game every time. I'm always flipping through my spell sheets and trying to find the optimal move. Uh, I can't bring myself to choose spells outside of the tried and true, so I end up using the same 20% of spells uh, with every character. Does anyone else feel this way? Marshals are so much fun, and I feel like playing a character instead of a uh, walking list of spell descriptions. Uh, and then he has a picture of his Warforged uh, Sorcerer, which is, uh, I, I like the design, Draconic Sorcerer. Well there's a couple things in this all rolled into one problem package <laughs> this goes back to what we were saying about uh you know the the say it warlock yeah where you're, where you're doing the same thing and he the, he likes the cycle of what a melee character currently has which is not a very good cycle right now but it's simple you know it's you swing your sword you roll your dice you add the same bonus to it if it's melee, regardless of what weapon it is, if it's ranged, regardless of what weapon it is, it, it, it's very, there's no confusion about it. It's very straightforward and clear. And if you like that style of play, play a warrior. Don't don't play the mage. So That's fine. So here's, here, here's where I'm going to say this. One is probably the inexperienced DM. Like, I'm going to go ahead and throw that one out there. I have a feeling it's just an inexperienced DM who hasn't spent enough time with the different spells to kind of really figure out how it is. Give your players the benefit of the doubt, absolutely. Uh, uh, not only of letting them do stuff, like if I say I, I hit the river with a with a fire bolt, it's going to cause a little steam, but if you say I hit the river with a fire ball, it's going to cause a lot of steam, creating co cover. So give your players the benefit of the doubt. Uh, making my players go hunt things down because I don't want to hunt them down, first off, that's bad. That's bad DMing. Absolutely bad DMing. I don't, uh, I, I, I would never make you do that. And secondly, as a player, because uh, this goes back on the player, don't flip through your pages. You can write down basic spell effects, or if it's a long effect, like press, let's say you just use press digitization for uh, purpose of this argument, write down the page that it's on and the book that it's in, and that and way you know, oh, it's page 84. Player's or, handbook. There's a reason they sell the spell card decks. They, they, and they, they have the app, the uh, the apps. Like we, we, I use the app on my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But, I'm not. I don't. There's wanna, a reason those things exist. I don't want to. I don't want to like mark out to the spell cards. The apps I'm fine with, but I don't want to mark out the spell cards. I like the spell um, cards, but I mean, there's also you, if you have the book on hand, just like put one of those little sticky markers and write, you know, whatever spell it is, so that you can just open the book to it. Yeah, that, yeah. and that works too. So, or even better, tell the DM to look at it themselves. Absolutely. Like, and, I, like, if you're using soft copy character sheets, I've done this where you copy and pasted the entire spell description 
you know, from D and D Beyond or wherever it is into your thing before you printed out your character sheet, so that it was on there, that you didn't have to go to the book. You had it on your right on the page. Yeah. So this ale, this isn't okay because I'm I'm usually more on the sides of the DMs. One because they they've got more that they've got to hold on to. But I like I said, making making my players go through something. Like I'll play that, devil advocate for the DM. <laughs> okay, good. Bye. Like, okay. I, I I'm gonna tell you as a hey, like DMs they're already they're already calculating a lot. But to sit there and tell them every time that they the spell is that's just lazy DMing. And well, saying Baka and uh your best friend, I'm blanking on what name Felix. he uses Felix. on Felix. Felix, uh they do this to me all the time. They they will find some ex- obscure spell combination that just happens to perfectly perfect storm of like where they're like okay we're gonna do this and i'm gonna cast this and he's gonna cast that so they interact together and completely shuts down the whatever you know and and sometimes the description they give because they're they're describing the end result rather than rather than how they got there how they got there and so i'll have to be like wait a minute does it work that way let me show me that spell Tell me what it read that read the actual spell to me because and some people make mistakes sometimes too like we when we first started playing fifth edition 10 years ago when it first came out uh we had how flaming sphere worked completely wrong where we were giving them double damage on the on the round it was cast it because we thought that you cast it on them it they took damage and then as a bonus action you slammed it into them and they took damage again in the same round and that's not how flaming sphere works they're only taking the damage once per round yeah still a uh, spell but it, yeah it, it was one of those things it's just if that's the way the the, per, the player thinks it works and it's not one of these spe- like tried and true spells that so they use then, over and over again even in this case it's on the it's on the on the dm because then you're giving that player you're telling him to go look it up and, and read me the explanation yeah. All I'm doing is I'm taking your word of what this spell does versus what I actually, you know. And look, you're the DM of your own world. We we cancel out you're... physics all the time in this game of, of basic things of how things simply work. <laughs> and but there, there's only one DM, and there's eight, you know, right. up to eight players, uh, and there are thousands of spells out there. But I get um... that, I get that. But sitting there making the player every time they want to cast a spell. Like that, and that's gonna well, get in the case. I also, he say every time he's not casting one of these twenty percent spells. That he said, you know, there's the the tried and true spells. It, he, so he's he's uh, he's an optimizer. You can tell he by is. the way, yeah. like that. I'm like, uh, he's not getting out of this scot free from me. Like, yeah. There's no way in hell you think I'm gonna let this guy get off that easy. Right. I'm, I'm sorry, so, Sean. So if this pull- is your yeah, he's pulling obscure spells. He he doesn't use the word obscure. But yeah. that's the ones he's talking. About. The DM is gonna if the DM does isn't a, aware of, you know, the spell off the top of his head. That, you know, some and some of them are broken. If you do some research on some of these, yeah, absolutely. Like, like the, I, I know there's a lot of complaining out there in the online community about silvery barbs. <laughs> it's one of those spells that comes from uh, Strix Havens. So, like, uh, like I said, you're you're sitting here thinking that I'm saying it, it it's completely the DM's fault and the players without fault here. No, the players yeah. actually with a lot of fault here because look, like you're saying, he's trying to optimize. I mean, very much. I want to use these specific spells, and he's I, I saw him do it on uh, I saw him do it on a TV show. I saw him do it in Gob- in uh, Goblin Slayer. Or I saw him do it on this. I should be able to do it. And they they're, they're using these concepts, under, not understanding how the how the the laws of D and D physics work. All right. Well, and and he he says something about um breaking the immersion. Bro, you're playing a game with dice. <laughs> like <laughs> the the immersion is the illusion of the RP in between these combat moments. There's not much immersion. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, if you want the, if you want the immersed like the live actions like the larpers a lot of times you'll find that they use the simplest mechanics to keep that emer- that, that that's a different experience than a D&D table generally is. Yeah. Um I mean they're rock paper scissoring their combat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's a win or lose. 
God, I'd hate that. You finally get to kill the king, and all of a sudden you lose because your Rochambeau fuck you just, your Rochambeau yeah. luck was out. Yeah, because right. because they're trying to keep the immersion of the fight, you know, rather you know, which you don't want to have to go back and read the spell every time. Yes, that makes sense. But that's not D and D. There there are rules for a reason, and as an optimizer, you're trying to take advantage of those rules. Yeah. You can't have it both ways. No, I, and I'm with you on that one. I like my big thing on this one. And like I said, the big reason I'm after the DM on this one is just because I wanted. I find it it's an inexperienced DM, and that's not the fault of the DM right there. But sitting there and going, well, what does that spell do? And you said you're you're taking the word of this player. This player could literally say fireball does eight d six damage cast at a level three, and we all know that that's wrong. We all know because we've got that experience. Again, no, nah, hold on, it's not that much damage. So yeah. But I, I don't think that's what this guy's doing either. No, no. I, I think this guy is pulling out, uh, you know, a mind flare special that that summons, you know, brain demons that uh, make you unable to cast a spell for an hour. So, you know, some completely random. <laughs> right. Well, I, I it's probably more along the lines he's. he's yeah, I, I see it probably. More, I'm, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt on this one that he's he's probably using more things like trying to use press digitation to kind of like create things that may just not be a thing. Yeah. Like, oh well, I'm going to create a bonfire, uh, and when press digitation says it's a small flame, and that's that's probably where I'm going with this one. One, yeah. and, and and I'm completely with you the fact that hey, look, he's probably just he, the min maxing, and he probably would just do better with the the basic combat of of like of, of martial character versus a, a caster it takes a lot to be a caster it, it's not easy being a spell caster in D D because it you could, have to try it, it could also be just as simple as the dm is normally a martial player as well that they just don't know the spells yeah but I, I, I still think that and that's one of the things especially with new dms uh we need to get off the backs of the new DMs. We need to encourage more new DMs because they don't become good, experienced DMs if they never try DMing. Right. I'm supposed uh, to run my first game tonight, and I'm fucking nervous about it because I'm sitting around at the nine. It was supposed to be like five players. It's up to nine now. Yeah. <laughs> and I they're would, all I, experienced players. I would honestly have told you to keep it at five first. Like if I if I had to like give you advice on this one, and now it's too late. You keep it small when you're first time in DM because it's it's so much less that you have to track and you kind you'll get better at it as you go and as you start understanding the rules and everything and what your role is as God God in yeah, this world. But it, it needs to be okay for that, especially for that new DM, to lean on those experienced players. You know. Oh like, no! Hey, break what their that, soul. Yeah, what, break what the, their soul. When you don't know what a spell does. It needs to be okay for the DM to go. Okay, what's that spell do? Yeah, yeah, but like I said, I. Uh, but not for every spell. Not for every spell. Not yeah. for every spell. Like at some point, you have to take a little bit of accountability on yourself and go, man, maybe spend have, a few minutes knowing. Look, you. I'm have, sure, as I'm a sure. DM, have spellbook burn open. Yeah, yeah. Like so you can look it up. Yeah. The D and D wiki great resource has every spell in it let me see if i can't pull that up i wouldn't i didn't, i usually i used to have that thing open all the time when we did our shows like i said i i think the guy's exaggerating especially because he did make that 20 percent comment That's yeah where no i i definitely see the min max of the guy but but this one all those 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 quote unquote standard 20 percent that he's talking about those are your fireballs your lightning bolts your melts acid arrows those are all the spells that don't get weird. So I guess he, he's the, probably the... picking all weird spells that nobody <laughs> ever heard of from obscure. Uh, so then that's also on the DM of not saying, hey, PHB plus one. Let me know what your plus one is and, and OK that. Because then if you're like pulling spells from Tasha's or some dumb stuff, and again, DM problem. But you can go that's to the d and the bad guy again that say, no, you can't you can't use that book you spent money on. There's PHB that's, plus one. All right. 
Yet again. Where where is the fault weighted then? I guess to wrap this up, is it is it more on this player? Is it more on the DM, or is it? Would you say it's equal equally weighted? I'm gonna give it more towards the DM. And before you guys get into this one, so we'll go me, then we'll go Bull Logue, and then Mr. Producer, you get your shot at it too. I'm going to say that it's mostly on the DM on this one. Like, making them do every spell says, hey, look, I'm I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared in any sense. And having the D&D wiki up, like, I just pulled it up. You can go through, and it's got all the different spell levels. A quick control F will help you out. If you have a laptop, all right, we're in the day of eight, we're in the day of modern technology. Have a smartphone. The D&D wiki works really well on a smartphone. I'm going to say that it leans more towards the the DM. They're both almost equally, but if I had to like tip the scales to one side, it's the DM. Uh just because you're 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 taking your players out of this. And and I don't I really think that if you're flipping through your spells and you're losing your immersion, bro, play a wizard. That's kind of like their whole thing. They're always flipping through spells. So, but the DM at the end of this one is because like their lack of preparedness and making their other players do 90% of the work, eh, just not doing it. Bulg, over to you. Um, I would say it's equidistant blame. The, the DM you gotta pick should one definitely... Or the other. You got to pick one or the other. None of this, this half shit. Everybody, you got to tip the scales to one side or the other. No, because I honestly believe it's equidistant. I, I, no, D, uh, one DM or the didn't... other, and then out of the four of us, whichever side leans is that's one or the other. That's not how debate works. <laughs> yeah, this is how we're doing it here. One or the other. You gotta tip the scales to one side. One. I'm putting it on wizards for making confusing ass fucking spells. <laughs> I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> Simple thing. Pick one side. If I have to pick one side, pick one side. You have to. I am picking the DM only because their style of DMing does not seem to match what the player wants. Right. And at that point, as the DM, you should go, I don't think you're right for our table. Actually, that's a solid point. Luke? I'm, I'm going to go with... Since I got to go with somebody, I'm going go to the go with the player. Somebody. And they say it's because the player, the player is a, they prefer to play melee. They know they prefer to play melee. Quit whining and just play melee. <laughs> Stop making excuses why you prefer melee. If you prefer, it's okay to just be a melee. You don't have to play a spellcaster. That's true, Mr. Producer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip it towards the player. I, th- I think, to to back the point loke said you can write down a blurb of the spell you know it doesn't have to be all the specifics but it can be like hey this is what it does and then if the dm has more questions they can bring it upon you know they don't have to it's up to the dm's choice if they want to let it let it flow as is or if they want to stop and be like hey i'm going to check out the spell real quick and then you can get into the immersion debate but i i would definitely I would say I think if the player could could cut out a lot of this just with a a quick blurb of like what the sp- you know what the spell does or the earmarking, this is the page, this is the book. I can flip to it in two seconds and bada bing bada boom. You don't have to take five minutes flipping through spells to find find what it is. All right. Well- you're both wrong and me and Bulger, right? No, <laughs> you, you guys made some solid points. Like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it, you that one. And it, in the end, it was it, it was it, what I said. If fault lays with both of them because yeah. we split down the middle. I, I <laughs> no, somebody's got to be right. It's, it's OK. Democracy. Now we ask now we ask the viewers in the poll and, and they'll now, decide on that. And, and since anything the pirate captain says is wrong and we always disagree <laughs> with them, it's now we automatically will yeah. move Bulg's vote. As a rule, show rule, both both <laughs> vote gets moved in any tie, three to one. Captain loses. I was right about a multiple things throughout the day. 
Well, no, I'm be right. Remember, yeah, you, even breaking... said, you even said it in the comments <laughs> that you're never allowed to be right. <laughs> yeah, that's bullshit, and you can't use my own words against me. I'm just gonna go throw that and that wrong comment there too. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> This is Ship Volg and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. Do me a solid. Make sure you go find us wherever you can on podcast formats, on videos. We're over on Amazon, Apple, Google, Spotify. Do us a solid and give us a thumbs up and a, and a like and drop a rating somewhere. It really helps us out. We really appreciate it. We also have... You can find us on Facebook. It's Chef Volg and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. If you don't see these three mugs right here, you're probably in the wrong spot. And make sure you do us a solid and go over to our our YouTube page. Drop a subscription. Subs are free. It's not going to cost you anything. You've already got an email. Do us that. And maybe watch some of the videos. See some of our different content. Check out our pirate, uh, the Pirate Captain's Pop Culture Galleys. Those are every other Fridays. Not this coming Friday, which would be... I don't have that date ready for myself. The 15th of uh, December, 2023. The 15th, thank you. So we won't be doing one on the 15th. We'll be doing one on the 23rd. And we are going to be releasing a Chef Bog special, a teaser that'll be in podcast format on the next podcast episode, which will be the next day. So stay tuned for all of that. With that being said, say goodbye, Bog. Baldur's Gate 3 is your next box now. Close enough, buddy. Luke. Yeah. Mr. Producer. Later, guys. And as always. Happy adventures, folks. Yar. You've been listening to Chef Bog and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything, featuring Loke the Bard. Like, follow, subscribe, and share this podcast. You can also find them on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just search for Chef Bog and the Pirate Captain's Recipes for Everything. Questions, comments, and mutiny requests can be sent to bogandpc at gmail.com. And as always... Happy adventures.